Okay, um, we will go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Ramya. Um, I am the Key Biscayne Community Foundation's uh, Citizen Science Coordinator. Uh, some of you may notice that we have uh, closed captions at the bottom and it um, doesn't like my name, so it calls me Romeo. Um, <laughs> if that's confusing, it's spelled R-U-M-Y-A, as you can see from my, my video. Um, but I just thought I'd make that clear in case anybody's watching and they keep seeing Romeo. Um, <laughs> so today we have with us uh, Nathan Moyer and Amancio Parde uh, Paradela, sorry, um, that are, they are uh, co-founders of Free Plastic, um, which is a, an organization that uses plastic that they collect from beaches and the ocean and uh, from communities and create art with it and uh, furniture and, and other more useful uh, things and in the process obviously help clean the environment. Uh, we also have with us today uh, Caroline Cabrera from O Miami, who is going to talk to you about a project that they are working on with free plastic um, that has to do with getting poetry out into the community and um, in places where it's much more visible. Uh, before we get started, just a few logistics. Um, if you can keep your video turned off and your sound muted, uh, during the presentation, that would be really helpful just to keep the, uh, the streaming quality uh, better. Um, if you have any questions, you can send them to me by email. I'll be monitoring it during the entire talk. Um, you can send them to us on Twitter at, um, at KBC or KB Sitsai. And, um, or you can send them to me directly through the chat function of Zoom. Um, they'll just come directly to me and then we will answer all the questions at the end of the talk. Uh, just a reminder that today's talk is going to be a little bit more than an hour, um, maybe about an hour and a half at the most. Um, so it's a little longer than what we're used to, but it's a really great talk. It's really interesting. And they're also going to talk about chances for um, everyone to uh, actually get involved in some of the work that they're doing. Uh, if you want to receive our newsletter to find out about future talks or, um, you know, the the what is it, bi-yearly <laughs> newsletter that we put out that has just interesting science news, um, you can send an email to my email at ramya at keyscience.org and I will add you to our list. And with that, I will hand it off to Nate and Amancio. Hi, thank you, Ramya. Um, thank you so much for hosting us this, this evening. It's an honor to be invited back. Um, I'd just like to take a moment uh, to acknowledge and thank our sponsors and partners because Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Um, first and foremost, the Key, uh, Key Biscayne Community Foundation, who is our fiscal sponsor um, and who makes this work possible. Um, our project, Plastic Poetry, is made possible with the support of the Miami-Dade County Department of Cultural Affairs and the Cultural Affairs Council, the Miami-Dade County Mayor, and the Board of County Commissioners. Um, to our partner, uh, thank you to our partner, the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Biscayne Nature Center, um, if you're not aware of their program, the Seagrass Adventure, um, please try and schedule one. Um, it's a rite of passage for fifth graders around uh, in Miami-Dade County, and it is good fun for everyone. I did it multiple times as a youth and uh, highly recommend. Um, the um, uh, City of Miami Beach Cultural Affair Affairs Council, um, a big welcome to those of you who are joining us tonight from the Miami Beach Culture Crawl. Um, and of course, um, O Miami. O Miami is a night foundation funded annual festival with the goal of every single person in greater Miami encountering a poem during the month of April. Mixing unconventional events with poetry and public places projects, the festival uses an open curation model that invites individuals and organizations to become creative partners. This April, O Miami will celebrate its 10th poetry festival. To learn how you can be involved, please follow them at O Miami Festival on social media and sign up for the newsletter at omiami.org. Um, they will announce their, um, it's through omiami.org where they will announce their upcoming schedule of events and programs. Um, so thank you to all of you. Um, we are Free Plastic. We are a Florida nonprofit corporation operating under KBCF's 501c3 charitable umbrella. Um, our mission is to locate, collect and upcycle the nearly endless supply of plastic pollution found in our local environment and convert it into usable objects, furniture, building materials, and works of art. Um, I am Amancio. My pronouns are flexible. I am the co-founder of Free Plastic and I've worked with O Miami Festival since 
2015. Um, I am also an artist. I focus on botanical specimens and ecology, and I am a proponent of composting everything. <laughs> Is that me? Yeah. Um, so I am Nate. Um, I am also co-founder uh, of Free Plastic. Um, I started working with plastics uh, unknowingly. Um, about 20 years ago, I worked in the marine industry and the car audio industry, fabricating different types of fiberglass structures um, uh, for boats and, and uh, cars and such. Um, and I have also done uh, about 15 years in the graphic and web design world uh, throughout South Florida and uh, the US. And um, for about 10 years now, actually 10 years last week, I've been working with a lot of nonprofits throughout the South Florida area. Um, so like Anuncio said, we founded Free Plastic in order to start trying to figure out ways to tackle all of this plastic pollution that, that we keep seeing washing up on our shores. And so we started uh, our first experiments um, back in April of 2019. Um, this is what we like to call one fish, two fish, plastic fish, post-consumer single-use plastic fish. Um, we were experimenting with using unrecyclable plastics as fillers for um, different types of uh, toys or, or, or ornamental objects. And so this was our first one. Um, after we did this, uh, we actually partnered with Remya at the uh, Citizen Science Project to do their key challenge trophies. Uh, the key challenge is an annual contest for, um, for students on Key Biscayne and Virginia Key. Um, and we ended up doing 25 of the trophies and we used more than a pound of unrecyclable plastics to uh, get them into a fun little Key Biscayne shape. Um, after the success of being able to um, work with the unrecyclable plastics and work with epoxy, we really wanted to start trying to find out what we could do with the recyclable content that was coming up. Um, and this is our first success and failure. Um, and it is one of our cherished pieces. This is 100% plastic pollution uh, washed up on our shores uh, here in, in Fort Lauderdale area. And it is a polyethylene tile that we baked and manually pressed into a form and then ran it through all of our uh, carpentry equipment. Um, it, is magnificent to us. Um, it's like plastic coral. Uh, unfortunately, when we were running it through the planer to get the final uh, dimensions for the subway tile, it did shear off, which is what you're seeing on the right hand side. Um, so after we started working with, sorry, technical difficulties. Um, well, after our tile and while we were still um, experimenting and building our infrastructure, we were invited to uh, go to the Museum of, Design, of Discovery and Science here in Fort Lauderdale uh, for World Ocean Day in 2019. And so uh, we took over their mods maker space and interacted with their roughly 1100 visitors that day. Um, we made 83 fish that we gave out to children and participants and we uh, spent about six hours discussing different ways to um, recycle plastics. Um, it was a fantastic experience and we loved it. Um, our next big uh, uh, step was to win a grant from the Awesome Foundation. When we first started, we were actually using shredders from uh, online companies that, that shred paper like you would in your office and we were, um, breaking them and then reassembling them so that we could uh, use it for plastics instead. Um, that was extremely wasteful because we kept breaking the actual um, components to the shredders. So in I think six months, we went through six um, different shredders. So it was like one a month almost. Um, so we found this online resource, this online community called Precious Plastic and they have open source machinery that we tapped into. And the first thing that we wanted to work on was this shredder. 
Um, so we won the grant from Awesome Foundation and that got us on a way to start building our shredder. Um, while we were working on that, we continued with our ex epoxy uh, experiments and we created our first piece of uh, wall art. Uh, this is uh, what we call our plastic ocean series and we are creating different animal shapes out of uh, salvaged wood. Um, this one in particular is made from a maple pallet that washed up on shore in uh, Eula Johnson Park. And our plastic farmer was out there and saw it. She dragged it up to the beach, left it on the sand to dry. And a couple of days later, we picked it up, milled it out, turned it into a cute little shark. Um, we did some other stuff with it too. We'll see that soon. Um, so this is actually 33 inches by 11 inches. So it's you know roughly three foot by one foot and uh, weighs about 15 pounds. It's a substantial piece. Um, and depending on the size and shape, these have vastly different amounts of uh, unrecyclable plastics in them. Um, so we finally got our shredder built uh, after we were doing the, uh, the plastic ocean pieces. And this is what we came up with. Um, we are not very good at working with metal directly. Uh, so we outsourced the uh, building of some of these components and then we modified the open source plans from precious plastic and, and we built this all out of wood and uh, lumber and plywood instead of the steel. It has been working wonderfully for us and we love it. Um, so once we had the shredder completed, our, our next uh, big kind of milestone was doing this lecture, but this was pre-COVID. Uh, we were actually able to do it in person, interact with people, show people and demo uh, participants, uh, what our products and what we were capable of doing. Um, and the focus of this lecture was mainly on uh, the ability to recycle, but then also the, the recycling crisis that we uh, find ourselves in and the amount of plastic pollution that is in our uh, everywhere, streams, waterways, parks, you name it, you can find it. Um, so then Jumping forward to about January of last year, 2020, we released our first table. This is our take on a river table, which is classically two pieces of live edge wood um, that have an epoxy river joining them in between. Our version is from that same maple pallet that we, uh, that Desiree, our farmer, got us. And we turned it into patchwork live edge. We carved our own unique live edge into it. And then we filled the center river with uh, one pound of unrecyclable ocean plastic and black epoxy for a nice kind of modern look. Um, following that in the spring of last year, right around this time, uh, we were getting ready for the uh, Oh, Miami Poetry Festival, um, and we finally built our injector. Uh, this injector actually allowed us to step up our processing of plastics to build reliable and um, reproducible uh, products that are made 100% uh, recycled plastic. Uh, so it has really kind of upped our game a bit. And with that, we did a second uh, uh, workshop and that was with Oh Miami, and that was on Earth Day of last year. Right at the beginning of COVID, um, everything got switched over to being digital. So we sat in our backyard. We did a lecture on the um, recycling crisis and plastic pollution, as we do. And then we turned it over to, to Oh Miami to write some poetry. And while they were doing that, we recycled live, uh, I think it was one kilo of, um, of polypropylene plastic. Um, and those are some of the tiles that we made while well, participants were writing some poetry. Um, so we were then also uh, asked to make uh, trophies for the Children's Trust in Miami. Uh, we ended up doing two different sets of trophies for them. Um, these are for the Youth Advisory Committee um, uh, Excellence Awards. And that was a wonderful uh, project where we got to team up with 3D printers, our friends over at Karani Life, awesome cups, by the way. Um, and we were actually able to kind of uh, refine how we're 
uh, uh, making the unique shapes and, and reproducing them. Um, and then after this crazy COVID year, uh, we finally come to our, um, the realization of plastic poetry. Um, and that's why everyone is here tonight. So in our previous lectures, we talk a lot about the, um, the plastic pollution, the impacts of plastic on our environment. And tonight we're gonna kind of skip that. Uh, we have already done a few lectures detailing what's going on in South Florida and Miami-Dade County and Broward County um, globally. And the Citizen Science Project has also been doing these lectures for a few years and uh, over half of them for the last year are actually on these same kind of topics. So um, Brie, uh, sorry, uh, Rumia can share links in the chat um, to, to these other lectures. Um, but we have sea turtles with the Miami-Dade County Sea Turtle Conservation Program Interpretive Program Leader, Leanne Hauptman. Um, another lecture was Brianna Gibbs, uh, who is also with the KBCF and Citizen Science Project. And she was discussing combating plastic pollution on a local and global scale. Um, then we also have Jordan Holder from Biscayne National Park, who was talking, who spoke about um, picking up the pieces after Armageddon um, and his natural resource remediation. Um, there was our lecture as well in there. And then there is also Sophia Mesa from the Debris Free Ocean. And uh, she was talking about plastics and, and why we should care. Um, so what we do want to talk about though is plastic and what we can do with plastic and what plastic actually is. And so these are our two main um, uh, categories for plastic. And almost everybody knows on the left, you have your uh, reusable plastic water bottles. This is our standard um, uh, plastic that everyone thinks of. This is called a thermoplastic. And these are plastics that can be reheated and reshaped into new forms uh, time and time again. These include polyethylene, which are plastic bags, polypropylene, which is food containers, um, PET, like those stupid plastic bottles, um, polystyrene, styrofoam, et cetera. The list is pretty long. On the right though, is a whole nother set of plastic. And this is a thermoset plastic. Fiberglass and epoxies, um, polyester, vinyl ester, silicone, polyurethane, bakelite, those are all actual plastics. And those are thermoset plastics that can only really be shaped once and they're formed by combining two or more liquids together that then eventually create a chemical bond that, that solidifies it. Um, classically speaking, on the left, you can recycle, on the right, you cannot. Um, however, that's not exactly true. We've come up with a way to recycle some thermosets using a method similar to say paper recycling, where you're offsetting the amount of new paper that's going out by, by peppering in some of the old. So we are capable of doing about a 40% of uh, shredded thermosets into our new products. And this is also why we tell everyone who receives any of our trophies or our tables, um, our lazy rivers, any of those, we can recycle them. If you ever get to the point where you don't want to have the trophy anymore, you can ship it back to us and we will reform it into uh, a new piece. Um, so that being said, Thermoplastics are what we're finding quite a bit in the environment. And this first one, um, to, there are roughly seven types of thermoplastics um, and they're categorized by number. Number one is PET. Uh, I always mess this up, uh, polyethylene terephthalate. Um, this is pretty much the, the clear part of your water bottle. The, the lid, the bottle cap, you'll find out later, that's a different type of plastic. But um, this plastic, uh, it's, it's temperamental to work with and it can release some dangerous chemicals. Um, however, it's like skilled professionals have been able to figure out how to recycle this plastic via melting and just shredding. Uh, free plastic, we don't, we don't really mess with it. Um, we're lucky enough to be in a uh, community where any numbered plastic can be recycled via the city or, or local government. 
So we do take our number ones and we put it back into the system, hoping that it gets recycled. Um, the next one is number two. Uh, this is HDPE uh, for short, but that's high density polyethylene. And number two and number four are pretty much the same exact type of plastic. They're both polyethylene. It's just one is high density, one is low density. The high density version of it, uh, you find in chemical bottles, um, detergent bottles, and then also things like pharmaceutical uh, bottles, or your prescriptions and whatnot. This is a really great plastic. It's reusable time and time again. Uh, you can make a lot of amazing products out of it. It's bright, it's colorful, and it's as long as you have the right safety equipment, it's safe to work with. Um, one quick note is uh, uh, most bottle caps are polypropylene. Uh, for some reason, Gatorade bottle caps are uh, polyethylene. They're the only ones we've come across that are, that are PE. Um, so our next one is my, there we go. Um, our next type is uh, uh, PVC. And PVC is, is commonly found in, um, you know, uh, plumbing and irrigation lines. And, um, and you can also find it in some uh, packaging material. There's uh, some types of PVC packaging is clear. It looks just like PET, but it's got kind of like a blue tint to it. And it's a little bit thicker, uh, a little bit harder to get into. Um, that said, uh, PVC is, dangerous. It is considered by most and especially by us uh, to be unrecyclable. And that is because before you even get to the melting stage on PVC, when you get it to the point where you can lightly bend it or, or manipulate it, it's already starting to give off chemicals like hydrogen chloride. And that will kill you. Um, so no recycling PVC. We, we get rid of it immediately. Number four is, like I said, uh, polyethylene. This is just a different form of polyethylene. We typically find it in plastic bags, uh, grocery bags, and this is a really great, easy type of plastic to recycle. Um, very, very recycled friendly. Our favorite by far is polyethylene, and, or sorry, polypropylene, which is uh, number five. And polypropylene is found in food containers, bottle caps, um, dairy containers, everything except those Gatorade caps, um, those bright orange caps that go someplace else. Um, number six is polystyrene. And polystyrene is commonly found in to-go containers, party cups like this, um, ramekins. It's easy to recycle with the proper amount of heat and, and pressure. However, it does have some harmful chemicals in it. So, the professionals say that you really need to limit the amount of time that you work with uh, heated um, uh, PS for health reasons. You know, Got to take care of yourself. Um, and then we get to the kind of junk category, as I like to call it. It's a catch-all. Plastic number seven is a number that they generated because whatever. It, it, it's it just every type of plastic that's been made since falls into this category. So. For the most part, people think it's okay to just slap it with a number seven and move on. However, there are some number sevens that are very easy to recycle, very safe to recycle. Uh, things like ABS, which you can use for uh, 3D printer uh, filament and thread. Um, but there's other ones, um, there's mixed plastics, there's all kinds of extra um, types of plastics like, like PLA or polycarbonates um, that may not be safe. So. Unfortunately, when you start seeing, if you're, if you're getting into recycling um, and you start seeing number sevens, number sevens, if they're not identified as uh, ABS or something else, then they can be re uh, considered unrecyclable. Um, so like I said, uh, we are in a, a plastic recycling crisis. Um, and similar to the plastic pollution conversation, we're gonna quickly skip past the recycling crisis content. Um, if you'd like to learn more about it, our first lecture, like I said, uh, it's on YouTube and we go in depth in that. And then also this article here is one that I wrote for uh, Key Science and Rona can uh, post a link to this article in the, in the chat. Um, the, the moral of the, 
plastic crisis is the the silver lining is is that this crisis has has sparked uh, interest in learning more about plastics, learning more about recycling, and and really learning more about owning your own waste. So most of these plastics can be recycled, and we'd like to show you a couple of what the world is doing right now with them. Um, PET, like I said, is really difficult to recycle, but uh, the fashion industry has gone nuts and they're starting to take PET and turn it into different clothing. Um, swimwear, I know there's a group from uh, graduates from UM that have a swimwear line. Um, there's so much you can do with this. However, this isn't a really DIY recycle uh, product. This is higher end and you need a lot more equipment for it. Um, polyethylene though, very easy and relatively safe to recycle and you can make beams, all kinds of different things out of it. Um, these textured beams by Hot Plastic are amazing and hopefully one day we will up our game to match. Um, like I said, PVC, don't do it. You will die. It is bad. Don't recycle it. Just get rid of it. Number four, Number four is fun, um, poly uh, LDPE is fun because you don't actually have to recycle it with heat. There's a lot of programs and concepts out there where you can uh, crochet pieces together like what's on the right from our good brands. Um, and then there's also Monsi's favorite um, where you can use an iron, a household iron with some parchment paper and layer it together to actually create a good substrate where you can then use your sewing skills to create bags and things like that. It's, it's a really great material. Bottle caps, like I said, are our favorite. These are tiles that we made um, that you'll see they went into a new product uh, just last month, actually. Um, number six is uh, polystyrene. And like I said, polystyrene you have to be careful with, but Precious Plastic made this conference table on the right. This is actually Jaden Smith's, uh, Will Smith's son or uh, uh, child. Um, this is his conference table for his studio. It's, I think, about 25 feet by 5 feet. They made it in Amsterdam and then shipped it over and installed it. It had to be forklifted into the studio. There's a great video online of it. Um, I don't think I have the link, but if you were to look up Precious Plastic and Jaden Smith, you'll, you'll see it. Um, it is a fantastic table and 100% uh, recycled polystyrene. So. Then of course we get back to number sevens again, where if they're not labeled properly, they might not get recycled. Um, we at Free Plastic, we also take any other non-labeled plastics um, that we can't identify easily. And we kind of call them number sevens as well. And we'll use them in our epoxy creations. So, um, Sorry, let me catch up. Um, so this is going to be a little bit more of an in-depth look at the products that we've actually uh, produced um, in the in the past two years. Uh, similar to uh, when we were at uh, MODS at the Museum of Discovery and Science, we made our fishies. We made four different molds. We took the molds from uh, plaster toys and we filled them with uh, epoxy and uh, recycled recycled, uh, unrecyclable plastics. Um, after that, we did trophies. And so these are the three trophies that we've done to date. We have the lit trophy on the left, which is the second of the, of the two for um, Children's Trust. And the lit trophy has roughly 56 grams of unrecyclable plastics in it. The middle one uh, is the Key Biscayne uh, Key Challenge logo or trophy. And that is at roughly 25 grams of unrecyclable plastics. And then the Children's Trust logo is a meaty 82 grams. Um, those were fun to, to do. Uh, we have also done our take on a Lazy Susan where we are carving in a, a river and filling it with about 30 grams, 35 grams of unrecyclable plastics with epoxy. Um, and then we've done our coffee tables as well. There is one coffee table that is missing here. I don't have a good photo of it, unfortunately, but um, we, we made, the one on the left is our one pound with the maple. On the right, we have a patchwork uh, walnut and aqua river. And then we did a third table for someone that might be on this feed um, called the Grand Bohemian where we salvaged an old childhood table and cut a river into it with 
and then added on some salvage teak as well. Um, our wall art started with the Plastic Ocean series. As you saw, we did the um, shark. We've also done the manta ray. Where we've got a sea turtle. We've got a tortoise. Um, we have a handful of different designs and um, on our store, you can actually purchase, I believe, the different colors and, and whatnot in different shapes. Um, and then this is our latest piece. Um, this is a wall piece that's inspired by the Webb uh, telescope. And um, it is a mock-up. <laughs> Sorry for my bad Photoshop skills. Uh, but the, the piece is real, the piece is delivered, it is hanging, and um, the, we call this the hive, and the hive had over a, ki a kilogram of uh, recycled polypropylene in it. Um, it is one of our favorites. And so as you can see, we can make tiles and tiles and tiles. We have uh, molds for uh, hexagons, squares, triangles, and subway tiles, and they are fun, and they get rid of a lot of this ocean plastic. Um, and then that brings us to our partnership with O. Uh, we teamed up and we uh, created custom molds um, for all the characters in the alphabet plus uh, special characters so that we can do trilingual or multilingual uh, poetry. We, uh, we made sure that we've got Creole, Spanish, and English covered. Um, yeah, and what our scope is and where our future is, is in developing new products and finding inspiration from this amazing network that's already out there. Um, our focus personally for free plastic is going to be on beams, on sheets, building materials, uh, 3D printer filament, um, and artwork. However, we don't want our vision to be the bottleneck for free plastic. Um, it, it shouldn't it shouldn't cut us cut off our creativity or our catalog. Uh, we want to partner and collaborate with local artists and craftsmen, similar to how we've been working with O, um, to create new products and to really push what we can do with, um, with, with this disposable material. Um, and so now we are at Plastic Poetry. Plastic Poetry is um, pretty simple. You farm the plastic, shred it, inject it, um, and then enjoy it, and that's it. Um, we are aiming to activate uh, community members to help clean up our local environment. We then extract the plastics from that cleanup to be sorted, shredded, and injected into molds that then allow us to share site-specific and community-based poetry and public art. Um, the plastic pollution that is farmed from a community um, is recycled into art for that community, and the poems are sourced from that community as well. So, our cleanups, outside of COVID, our cleanups are going to be big and grand and wonderful and open to everyone. Unfortunately, I have an underlying health issue, which means I cannot be out in public with COVID without a vaccine. So we have uh, partnered with one, our farmer, Desiree from Son of a Beach Cleanup. We love her to death. Um, and this, this cleanup that we're working on now is also with Manny from Philabag and any of the Key Biscayners on here, I'm sure know Manny. Um, they will be actually running our cleanup and we're gonna be doing a cleanup at the Biscayne Nature Center um, coming up. You can, uh, you can register for this uh, at freeplastic.org slash register. And I think Lumia can put that into the chat. Um, but uh, due to COVID and to make sure that we're protecting Desiree, Manny, and any of the people who participate, we are going to cap this cleanup to only two groups of 10 people. Um, so the registration is going to be for a first come first serve basis and we'll let you know as soon as we've got everything confirmed uh, if, you, if you sign up tonight. Um, and like I said, as the vaccines roll out and it becomes more safer for us to be in groups, we'll release the cap and, and open this up to a lot more. Um, after so that cleanup is taking place on the 27th, so that is February 27th at 3 p.m. at the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Biscayne Nature Center. So get your pod together and sign up. Yes. It'll be fun. <laughs> so, um, so yes, it'll be at the Nature Center. Um, they are, uh, we love that they're hosting our first cleanup and it's an honor to be working with them. Um, so after the cleanup is completed, uh, 
that's when our, our work really begins. This is our shredder. This is a really more in-depth look at our shredder. We took an 1800 RPM motor, connected it to a, a 30 to one uh, worm gearbox, and that gave us a 60 RPM stainless steel shredder. And those are all fun words, but it's a lot more fun to watch it actually work. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any usable video of it shredding itself, but this is, uh, this is this is its function and that's its live speed. Um, it's a lot of torque. Yeah, there's definitely some torque in there. It, it, it's a fun toy. Um, and then our second machine is the injector. So the injector is is a little easier uh, than than we expected to get together. Um, so pretty much we you have your barrel and your plunger and that allows you to inject into a mold. Around the barrel, you've got the four or up to six heating bands. Those heating bands are attached to thermocouples that report data back to those uh, square devices, which are called PID controllers. And all the PID controller does is say, what temperature do you want it to be? What temperature is it? And what do we have to do to get it there? And the PID controller is the exact same function as say your oven or toaster oven. Um, so we have, two different PID controllers. We can control the bottom of the nozzle so that we can make it a little hotter uh, for an easier injector and the top of the nozzle to get the plastic prepped um, and ready to go. And at the bottom of the barrels, you screw on the, um, the, the different molds. We have two different size molds, one at roughly five foot, or sorry, five foot, um, five inches by five inches. And that lets us do our tiles uh, everything but our subway tiles um, that does squares, hexagons, and triangles. And then our larger molds that we've created with the support of o Miami, um, we have, I believe it's 28 molds and those are roughly eight inch by eight inch and they yield a five inch tall Helvetica, uh, loosely based on Helvetica uh, uh, letter. And it takes almost one entire full injector tube to get one letter. Yeah, that, that barrel is about uh, two and a half feet long. And for certain letters, it takes the entire tube. Um, and so once we have our letters and we've, and we've secured the poetry, uh, then it's just a matter of installing it. And we've got a handful of different ways that we can install um, for the Nature Center. I believe we're gonna be doing a uh, 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 installation that can be removed very easily or moved around. Uh, we can also do a semi-permanent installation where it's uh, using a mastic, glue, epoxy, things like that. And then if you want something that's like completely permanent, we suggest doing um, the, the mastic with uh, some kind of like a tap con uh, concrete screw, something like that. And that brings us to O Miami. So in addition to collecting the plastic, we need your help in, well, we need your words. We need your words. We need you all to come up with the poems. So I'm going to introduce Caroline. Um, it is my greatest pleasure to introduce her. Um, she is an author. Um, she is the author of four books, including Saint X. Um, at O Miami, she combines her backgrounds as a poet, as an educator, and a liter literacy advocate to support O Miami's community-based education programs and publishing projects. Her poetry makes me hold my breath until I acknowledge the last word and then release it. She's just that amazing. Um, so welcome, Caroline, and take it away. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mancia. That was a wonderful introduction. <laughs> and thanks, Mons and Nate, for all of that uh, super informative, really interesting um, information. So yes, O Miami is all about, um, is all about community and community voices and uplifting the voices of Miami. And so this project of plastic poetry is very much um, up our alley, taking, you know, taking resources from a neighborhood, from a community and using that to, uh, to promote the voice, the words of that community. And so in that spirit, I'd love if you would play along with me <laughs> and we'll try to generate some poetry tonight that could potentially be used in a plastic poetry project on Key Biscayne. Um, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna start by reading a poem to you uh, by the poet George L. Lyons. And this is 
Oh, and before I get into this, um, I will ask you at times to contribute. And I know we're, we're off audio, that's totally fine. So what I'll ask you to do is I have my chat open. If you go to the chat, you should be able to chat me directly. I'll be keeping an eye on that. So if I ask questions, then I'll read out, oh, okay, this person said this, et cetera. So that's the way we can kind of be interactive right now. All right, so thanks for that. So uh, this poem by George Ella Lyon is called Where I'm From. Um, and you can probably guess that since we're talking about place specific, super, um, super place-based uh, co a collection of, of plastics and then putting that back in the community, this is really a great poem to kind of get us thinking about what we might do tonight. I am from clothespins and Clorox and carbon tetrachloride. I am from the dirt under the back porch, black, glistening. It tasted like beets. I am from the forsythia bush and Dutch elm, whose long gone limbs I remember as if they were my own. I'm from fudge and eyeglasses, from Imogene and Alifair. I'm from the know-it-alls and the pass-it-ons, from perk up and pipe down. I'm from he restoreth my soul with the cotton ball lamb and 10 verses I can say myself. I'm from Artemis and Billy's Branch, fried corn and strong coffee, from the finger my grandfather lost to the auger, the eye my father shut to keep his sight. Under my bed was a dress box filling old pictures, a sift of lost faces to drift beneath my dreams. I am from those moments, snapped before I budded, leaf fall from the family tree. All right. So first, is there anything in that poem that really struck you a line or a word that had you thinking or, or maybe um, particularly got your attention? All right, yes, so I'm going back to the beginning of the poem. Oh, so uh, Monica Ann says the use of prepositions. So yeah, we've got from, from, we've got that repeated thing that's happening throughout. Emma says, I loved the first stanza. The images felt so specific to the read to the speaker. Absolutely, yeah. Um, the black glistening uh, dirt that tastes like beets. That's maybe my favorite part of the poem. It's so rich and sensory. You can see it, you can almost feel it. And then you've got that taste as well. And, and almost the smell, you can smell that like really earthy thing. Um, uh, Ms. Carbio says the repetition of I am. Yeah, so it's got this repeated thing that kind of, it's like an engine moving us through the poem. All right, so, this poem is really, it's, it's a collection of these very specific um, sensory details, right? So we have clothespins, right? That's just, that's something you can, you can picture it on the line. You can picture yourself kind of like moving your finger. So you've got this touch, you've got this vision, um, the forsythia bush. So I actually have a picture of forsythia just because I love it so much. I think it's so beautiful. <laughs> so we've got this bright, vivid thing. Um, and then as we move on, we get to other types of sensory things. So we've got the know-it-alls and the pass-it-ons. We, we, we understand those types of people. Um, we, we all have known or have been a know-it-all or a pass-it-on. Malcolm says, I liked all the unique words, alifair, carbon tetrachloride. Yeah, it's super, super specific. Um, fudge and plastic, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we've got perk up and pipe down. So we've got these things that you're kind of hearing the way, um, you know, I think we could all kind of think of, of a list of the things we hear in Miami that might be really specific to Miami. Um, we've got bits of memory, reminds me of the way my memory works. Yeah, so we kind of, things just pop into your head. Ramia says the last line of a leaf falling reminded me of another poem. Uh, by E.E. E. Cummings, yeah, that's great. So we've got all this really specific um, detailed information that starts to give us a sense of this person's past and their family and, and the, type of, um, the type of place they grew up in, the type of community they grew up in. So that's what we're gonna try to achieve tonight with our poetry. Um, and I wanna share with you before we get started writing our own, I wanna share with you a very short poem by a Miami poet, 
named Jaquela, um, who was a fourth grader at Orchard Villa Elementary in uh, Liberty City when she wrote this poem. I am from Miami where the rain pops on the window like popcorn. It's a perfect poem. <laughs> it's got this perfect, beautiful simile. It's got this wonderful, uh, Emma says this is one of my favorites. Yeah, it's got this wonderful image that just immediately you can see exactly what she means that those rainstorms where the, the, the uh, raindrops are hitting the window and they make a loud sound like those giant summer raindrops making like a popping sound and exploding. It's just such a beautiful image um, that captures so much in, in one little sentence, three little lines. Um, and so that's what I'm gonna ask you to take some time now to do. I want you to, um, to get yourself pen and paper or you can open up a, a Word document or whatever works for you. And I want you to start thinking about some things in your neighborhood, in your community, in your surrounding environment that could start to, if we put them together in a list the way uh, Georgella Lyon did in her poem, um, and if we use this awesome imagery like Jaquela does, um, once we start to put those together, they, they could all together start to paint a picture of your, your Miami or your Key Biscayne or your, you know, your, your street, your block. Um, so I've got, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you through some brainstorming questions. Um, so does anyone have any questions before we begin about what I'm asking you to do? You can put them in the chat. Okay, then I'm gonna go to my first page for brainstorming. So start by saying, I am from, and then you're gonna start listing some familiar sights, sounds, and smells of your neighborhood. And as you list them, you can kind of tease them out more like J. Kayla did um, by, by putting that simile in, or you can do more um, what George Ella Lyon did and just kind of accumulate those things. So think about how you wanna do that. I'm gonna give you a couple minutes for that. Uh, so Emma asked, do we send the, the lines that we're writing to you as a DM or to the whole group? So you can add them in the chat if you'd like, or you could wait for now. You can do whatever you want. You can add things as you write them, or you can kind of wait till the end and put something in the chat if you'd like, whatever you'd like to do. Ooh, Emma says, I am from strollers and dogs off leash. Ms. Carbio says, horns, sirens, birds, peacocks, rottweilers, chihuahuas, woodpecks, woodpeckers, and fichos religiosa. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna move us to the next prompt, but you can keep putting these in the chat if you want. Uh, did I skip one? No, okay. I am from, how about some familiar foods? And that can be things that, um, you make in your home or that someone makes for you in your home or things that you encounter in your neighborhood, you know, from your favorite restaurant or, or whatever that might be. But I think food gives us a real sense of community sometimes. So, um, and it can also be things like mangoes on your tree outside or something like that. Omar says, I am from a place where turkey vultures circle overhead, untethered kites cut loose to the breeze. Awesome, Omar, it's a beautiful image. Ms. Carbio says, I am from purple rice, long skinny avocados. Oop, I gotta stroll up. I am from purple rice, long skinny avocados and Hayden mangoes. Awesome. Simone says, I am from the blooms on a mango tree. I am from the rhythm of the music that passes on the street. I am from the pastel colors that cover our homes. I am from the yellow police tape left behind. I am from the aromatic winds that flow from the local barbecue truck. Beautiful. <laughs> Samnia says, I am from Hialeah, salsa, cafecito. I love it. <laughs> Emma, I am from Roared Recycling Service Wednesday morning, from espresso unspilled and mustard undabbed. You guys are doing a great job. <laughs> Uh, 
Romeo says, I am from spices and colors, the sweetest of fruits and hottest of chilies. Ooh, that sounds wonderful. Miss Carbio, I am from the black, strong and sweet cafecito. Awesome. The food one, I think always kind of gets my mind going a lot. That's something I like to think about and write about. <laughs> it seems like you guys too. <laughs> Omar says, we're shirt collars and purses, smell like croquetas de jamón y fruteritas de pacayo. Very good. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna move us to the next brainstorming prompt. I am from, and you can say family sayings or other familiar sayings. So this types of things you might overhear on the street. This is kind of calling back to in George Ella Lyon's poem where we had um, perk up and pipe down and um, he restored the soul. Malcolm has, I am from canals used for random afternoon fishing, crawfish and snapper, from trees that drop coconuts and mangoes, green or yellow red riper, awesome. Claire, I am from Gaspacho Bustello, the smell of wind before the heated rain, my bike whistling. Natalie, I am from the land of Hialeah racetrack, flash floods and morning colada brewing. Ms. Carbio says, I am from swims and strolls, rolling wheels. Monica Ann says, I am from Suriname Cherries. Oh my gosh, I love Suriname Cherries. I am from Suriname Cherries welcome me, welcoming me back. Call me leaves, please call me. Snail I accidentally crushed. Rain pattering above the rafters. Stones where cats leave marks. Moldy wooden fences. White picket fences that pretend the wandering woman isn't there. Falling fronds. Great. These are so great. You guys, I'm, I'm always impressed by what people are able to do on the spot because I'm a very um, slow writer. <laughs> I'll move us to the last of the brainstorming prompts. Um, and so this is, I am from, and now is where we, we kind of start to think about people. So in the context of a neighborhood, sometimes it's like, you know, that guy with the in my neighborhood, there's a guy who has an adorable dog and he walks with a parrot on his shoulder. He would probably make it in my I am from uh, poem about my neighborhood. Um, so you can think about the, the characters that make your home your home and that can be close, it can be family and friends and then out to your larger community. Omar says where Calle de la Boca is rolled out like stained white linen over a breakfast table. <laughs> Emma, I am from Charlie the Cat, thick and glossy after a winter indoors. Oh yeah. I am from a place where the heladero and the viandero have beef, but the afilador is chill. <laughs> I love the characters in that. <laughs> We'll take just a minute to finish up what you're writing right now. I know you might not be completely finished with your poem, but take a minute to get to a stopping place. Tracy says, I am from golf cart caravans and butterflies dancing around my head. All right. So you might want to continue working on your poem, but if you'd like, I, I loved how people shared bits and pieces as they worked. But if you wanna put in what your, the, the full length of your poem um, into the chat uh, to share, we can do that. Um, oh, Tracy says, I am from Chow and Bueno Bye. <laughs> um, so I'll let you, if you wanna do that, if you wanna type up your full poem into the chat, I'll give you a minute to do that and share. And while you're taking time to chat, uh, to type, um, I'm gonna share another, youth poem or two for you because I just I love to show off our wonderful youth poets from Miami and these are some of my favorite poems. Uh, so this is from Franklin also from Orchard Villa Elementary fourth grader. Uh, this is my hometown. 
I am from Liberty City, where sometimes the temperature is just right. I am from a place where the balls dribble, dribble, dribble all day. I am not from a place like yours. I live in a dangerous place. I am not from a place with bad people. I hear police sirens screeching. We also have many parks with red slides and hurricanes with strong winds. I am from a place where flowers like to bloom and the sky is blue like God loves you. And then just one more youth poem. This is by Shania from Orchard Villa. She was a third grader. It's called Beautiful Breeze. I am from a place where you hear the ice cream truck pass by in the neighborhoods. I am from a place where I can call home and sleep peacefully in the night air. I am from a place where at night the beautiful plants blow in the night breeze and the, and the smell flows into your window. I am from a place where I can hear the melody blow right in my ears. I am from a place where the tall buildings cover the sun from my face. I am from a place where at night the neon lights shimmer. I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, I'm gonna give you a second to put anything you might want to put into the chat to share some of your poetry. But in the meantime, if you do, um, so we'll go ahead and share this or, um, and save this chat. So anything that you've shared so far, we have a record of that. Um, but if you do wanna work more on this poem and then send that, um, send that my way, I, I'm gonna put my, email in the chat. It's caroline at omiami.org. Um, so feel free to, you know, work more on your poem and send it our way uh, so that we have that for potential use in plastic poetry or also for other projects because that's the way that the way that omiami, um, that's the way the omiami archive works is that we collect poems from people in the community from all over Miami-Dade County. And we like to tie those to a zip code so that we know what neighborhood people are from. So when you send in your poem, please make sure you have your name and your zip code on it. Um, and we, when we have a project that comes up that, that is happening in a particular neighborhood, we search our archives for those zip codes and we say, oh, you know what? Tracy wrote a beautiful poem about this. That's perfect for this particular project. So we'd love to have any of your work in the archives. So you can go ahead and email me. Um, I see Simone has shared a piece. She says, I am from dog, dogs barking at Amazon trucks, kids playing ball in the street, neighbors laughing on the phone, undercover cops speeding by, pastors preaching on Sunday morning. Oh, so that's where you got all your characters and I love that, that's, that's wonderful, Simone. Um, I'll wait a minute to see if anyone else wants to put something in the chat to share and then uh, we'll pass it back over to Amancio and Nate to take some questions. Let's give it maybe two more minutes. Oh, so Natalie asked, can you tell us what the four I am to so the brainstorming categories? Um, the first were, uh, I'm gonna make sure I'm putting this to everyone. So you have this, if you wanna work more on your poem later, that's a great question, Natalie. Okay, so the sights, sounds, and smells of your neighborhood, the, um, Second was familiar foods. Third were the sayings, so family sayings or overheard things. Um, and then the fourth is what I guess I'm calling characters now, but the, the, the people that influence your community. All right. So yeah, if you want to work more on that, I can, I would love to read all of your work. So make sure you email it over to me at Caroline at Miami. Um, all right, Monica Ann says, too much silence makes me hush the boys, bad daytime TV through the wall, US one breeze, Metro rail soothing, neighbors ranting about the sound wall, all noise who hears. All right, great, that's awesome. Um, you can keep putting these in the chat for me. I'll save the chat at the end, um, but I'm gonna pass it back over to Nate and Amancio for any questions. 
Thank you. That was awesome. I love how much cafecito there is. <laughs> it's <is> so Miami. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, do we have any uh, questions? Did any come in, uh, Rumia? I wasn't able to track the chat or anything. Um, I have not gotten any questions, but um, I think maybe people were just waiting for us to open it up. So if anybody has any questions, um, let me actually share my screen to remind people. Um, so you can send questions to uh, my email at ramya at uh, keyscience.org or um, tweet at us at kvsitsai, or you can just use the chat function and uh, send them to me and we will answer your questions. So we have the first question from Ms. Carvalho. Uh, do you recycle cans or glass? No. No, we don't. Um, we did start researching into glass. There's uh, one of the big recycling problems. Oops, sorry. Uh, one of the big recycling problems right now is that there's no buyers for glass, apparently. And uh, that's, I'm assuming that that's because it's possibly cheaper to purchase than to recycle. Uh, so a lot of the glass just goes into the regular waste stream, um, hopefully at least to, to energy or something like that. Uh, however, there is a lot of similarities in the temperatures and the concepts behind the glass and plastic. So I'm not saying no to it forever, but uh, for now, no, we don't. Um, also, just so everybody knows, once uh, once we're out of the, uh, no, thank you. Uh, once, once we're out of the COVID era, these workshops are gonna be in person and we would like to be doing uh, live recycling. Uh, one of the things that we've been working on since uh, since before COVID started was a mobile recycling unit. So we have the ability to show up on location at a cleanup and recycle the plastic that you are um, collecting at the cleanup right then and there. Um, and then we can also demo all of our equipment and um, and products and everything else that we've been doing as like my hexagon that I've been pitching with. Um, yeah. Anything you want to add? Um, I'm also posting the uh, links. Um, I'm going to send this to everybody. Oh yeah, drop that in the chat. Yeah, to uh, register for the um, for the cleanup. Oh, except me, you spelled Stoneman wrong. Um, <laughs> and, Wait, uh, I spelled something wrong? No way. <laughs> So yeah, so I'm sending the link to register for, for the cleanup if you're interested in doing that. Um, as he said, it'll be at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Nature Center, uh, Biscayne Nature Center, and um, a few other links for providing feedback and staying in the loop with free plastic to see what they're doing and to follow them. So I will post those right now. Yeah, there's uh, one of those links, the freeplastic.org slash poetry. That's where we're gonna be posting all of our uh, uh, final production and any of the resources and notes that come from this. This is an ongoing lecture that we will be doing on kind of a monthly basis moving forward. And then uh, we'll be keeping it on Zoom to be safe for now and then eventually rolling out to uh, actually be out with you all. And um, as far as the survey goes, that just really helps us uh, you know, gauge, gauge our interactions, uh, find out from you all uh, if it's, how it's going. Um, um, I have another question. Uh, Ms. Carvalho asks, are you at the Biscayne Nature Center? Um, you can probably answer that better. The, the cleanup is there, but you're not based out of there. The clean, yeah, the cleanup is there. We are not based out of there. Um, our fiscal sponsorship is out of the Key Biscayne Community Foundation, which is on Key Biscayne. Uh, we actually live up in Fort Lauderdale. Um, and so all of our equipment is up here as well. Um, but like I said, it is a mobile unit now. So once it's safe, we will be going all over the place. Uh, so you'll get to see and play and, and tinker with all this stuff. Um, and I see you asked about the, uh, the sculpture as well. Um, the biggest wall art piece that we've done is the, uh, we've done two plastic oceans. One that was a sea turtle and one was the shark that are uh, 33 by 11. Um, those are both epoxy and unrecyclable plastics. We also experimented with trying to make a bucket 
Um, it ended up being the most expensive bucket I think you could ever have in the world. Uh, uh, I think it was a couple hundred dollars, like 350 maybe to make a, a 12 by 12 by 18 bucket. Um, we thought it would be really cool to turn the stuff into a bucket to give back to our farmers. And um, that that failed miserably. And it weighs over 10 pounds? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it's 12 pounds. No one wants to carry this thing. So it is now a uh, garbage can in our office. Um, yeah, bright orange garbage can. Uh, but that that's the biggest as far as, as far as the art goes. The coffee tables, those are I think 42 by 28 or 42 by 30. Um, so those are pretty meaty. The, the, the one and a half pound coffee table, the aqua table with walnut, I think that weighed close to 50 pounds. Um, and like I said, a pound and a half, uh, easily a pound and a half of unrecyclable plastics went into that. Um, can you remind us of the date for the, the cleanup for those? Yeah, the date, the cleanup is going to be next Saturday, a week from Saturday. Um, and we for are- The 27th, uh, right? The 27th. Um, we are unfortunately capping it at two groups of 10 um, for Manny and Desiree, but uh, you guys get the first stab at it. So if you're interested in doing the cleanup, jump on there now. It's first come first serve. So we'll get back to you as soon as we have everything set. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I have another question. Do you recycle plastic bags? Yes, we've been experimenting with it. Um, we have in our in the mods demo we did the ironing ironing method where you can layer them and then use that as a substrate for other products um there is someone who uh in the precious plastic network who uses just a regular oven and just adds more and more plastic bags into a bowl and then kneads it like dough with uh with heat safe gloves and has come up with some really amazing pieces, uh, sculpture, blocks, uh, decorative ornaments. Um, and, and that is something that we're really interested in as well. Uh, right now, we're mainly focusing on the denser materials like uh, HDPE and polypropylene um, and polystyrene. But yes, definitely. Um, Part of the difficulty with the plastic bags is that they can't go in the shredder because they will actually tangle up the shredder. Um, so, uh, until we have the capacity to actually process them in, say, a big oven um, or find a way to, in a mass quantity, compress them down into a higher density form, um, we're not going to be working with them that much. Yeah, about the only method that we've come up with to work with our current uh, gear is to, similar to the crochet method, tie them into knots so that you get a more dense material and then we load it into the, uh, to the barrel of the injector. Um, it hasn't worked perfectly yet, so I can't say that we're doing that. Um, and uh, Natalie, yeah, we, uh, the Citizen Science Project always records their lectures. So it's about a week or so, I think, in processing and upload, and then it'll, it'll be on their YouTube channel. Uh, and I'm sure that I will be sharing it on free plastic as well. Uh, the second it's up there, I'm kind of geeky like that. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have this up. Uh, there'll be some light editing done and that's about it. Um, can you, did you mention anything about styrofoam? Can you talk about that again real quick? So styrofoam is a uh, polystyrene. It's uh, similar to the HDPE and LDPE, uh, low density and high density polyethylene. Uh, styrofoam is an aerated, I believe, uh, version of polystyrene. So once it's aerated, it's really kind of difficult from my understanding to recycle it back into a very solid rigid form. So what a lot of people do is they use, uh, I believe it's an acetone or MEK or some kind mm -hmm. of uh, a chemical that breaks it down lightly. And as long as you have the, the uh, proportions right, you can turn it into a glue um, that you can use for all types of different plastics. Uh, specifically, it's recommended for um, gluing polystyrene to polystyrene. So that way you're not actually mixing your different plastics. Um, but yes, there are methods. We have a whole giant pile in our house behind me um, of, of styrofoam that we're gonna be experimenting with. It's like an episode of Hoarders. Trash. Plastic. <laughs> plastic trashy Hoarders. <laughs> Um, so one of the things about polystyrene, though, is that it's very simple in its structure um, because it is benzene and um, 
Is it benzene and styrene? Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot it. Um, and so it is those two chemicals. Neither of those are particularly great for the human body or for the environment. Yeah, the uh, Precious Plastic Network did a lot of uh, research into what kind of fumes are coming off at every stage of recycling. Um, and they did find that um, not in the shredding process as much, but in the, in the heating process for injections and pressing, uh, if, you, if you actually have one of the presses, that there's quite a lot of fumes that comes off of it. So uh, we have not gotten too far into polystyrene just yet, but we hope to. That's all the questions that I have. Um, I haven't gotten any. Wonderful. Well, that works for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having us again. Thank you. Again, again. Um, if, if anybody does have questions um, later on, you can always still email me and I can forward any questions to Nate and Amancio or Car Caroline. And um, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you guys so much thank you, and thank you. Um, thank you have a good night. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.